Good day guys, John here. Today we want to talk rifle setup. After you have your action in your chassis, you're going to want to set the chassis up to fit you and then your optic up to fit you as well. It is very important that we have this all matching to us so that we are not tempted to exercise improper fundamentals behind the rifle. If we mount this while we are practicing incorrect fundamentals, then the optic is going to be set to us being in the wrong place, and likewise our buttstock. So first things first, before we mount our optic, we want to make sure that our rail is tight. For that, I use fix-it sticks. I have their new um, 65 inch pound variable adapter here. I really like that because it lets me have one little kit and do everything on my rifle. This is the fix-it stick kit that I use. I have added a extension in here so I can torque my chassis screws. And I also carry an Allen wrench for resetting turrets. And then underneath, I have another Allen wrench for the smaller grub screws that are found in some turrets. But it comes with all of the standard sizes that you will need, including the half inch for some rings and mounts, your, um, rail screws, your stock slash chassis screws, and there's also a couple of empty slots where you can add some specialty items should you need them for your setup. And what I really like is, it zips up into a cute little package that I can throw into my bag and I know I've got everything. So I checked the specs recommended by Zermit for the Rimex and we want to see um, 20 to 25 inch pounds. So I'm going to check each of my rail screws. Done. So we know this is good and now, when I mount my optic, I don't have to worry that anything's going to be loose. And I recommend that periodically you remove your optic and uh, check these screws because I have had them come loose on me before. That was on a different rifle, but all rifles are the same. So the next step is we need the butt stock to fit us. If we don't have this correct, we're going to put the scope in the wrong place. So the length of pull is the first thing that we want to look at. Length of pull is uh, important, particularly if you are shooting a dedicated position. So if you're setting up only to shoot prone, you're going to want to fine tune this to perfection for that position. And likewise, if you're shooting other positions. But for PRS, we need to be able to shoot in a multiple variety of different positions. Some of them, uh, normal and some of them kind of make do. So we need to have flexibility back here. That's the most important thing that we are looking for. Now prone we typically would run a longer length of pull than you would in your other positions and I would recommend that you err on the short side. I have the buttstock, it's the standard buttstock here, collapsed all the way and prone, I would actually like it one inch longer. But then when I move up to a positional shot, I start having to reach. And the other thing is, if I get in an awkward position, being shorter is gonna give me more flexibility. I can, I can always tighten up more than I can start reaching. So an easy rule of thumb to get you started is the distance from your bicep if you have your bicep against the, uh, drop this thing out here. 
your butt pad against the bicep and then we're going to make our finger 90 degrees. I take my, my gripper fingers and I want them to come in in front of the uh, grip. If I start hitting in here, I'm too long. And while that might work prone in a positional shot, it's going to start hindering my movements. So I want to be able to easily have a perfect grip on the rifle. That's going to let my finger come in in the correct place and let my grip support my trigger finger. If you're a short arm person, you may actually find that you're better off running the shorter version of the buttstock here on the ACC in order to give you a little bit more wiggle room. Once you have your buttstock set up and then we're ready to move on to our optic. Now for mounting your optic, what I recommend doing, if you have enough rail room, mounting your scope far enough forward in the rings that you can easily see your turret with your, um, in my case, left eye because I'm shooting right-handed. If we have our ring right up against here on some optics, you have to lift your head in order to see your turret. Now this may not be an option depending on the amount of rail space that you have and in what relation it is to your buttstock. So this is how I will start out because in this case, I know it will work. But if you don't know, trial and error. So we're gonna set our scope on. I'm gonna do the finger tight thing on one of these screws here so I don't lose my scope. And uh, then I am going to move to the prone position. I want to set up my eye relief based on the prone position to start. And uh, we'll move to that and I'll show you why. All right, we're building a proper prone position here. We're going to simply disregard the optic. I just want to get comfortable here. Um, I want my head to be in a comfortable position. I'm not stretching or having to Pull my head back. I'm simply looking for a uh, very comfortable, relaxed position. So for me, that's going to be just like this. I could uh, lay here for quite a while without any concerns. So I'm going to drop my optic on. I'm going to, uh, this is as far back as we'll go. And we'll look through, through the scope here. I have a clear field of view and I'm going to run through the magnification range because some scopes it actually changes what you want for an ideal eye relief. So for me right uh, between 10 and 12 is the shortest eye relief I have but prone I'm typically going to be shooting a little bit higher. Okay, so we have figured out that all the way back is a usable position. I'm going to come back one extra slot. I wouldn't mount an optic like this, but it's going to tell me if this is too close now. And once again, eyes closed, disregarding the optic, I'm comfortable. And let's go through. It's too close. When I get up to the higher magnifications, I have to start pulling my head back. All right. So this is the furthest back I can run. Let's go ahead one. So right here, we're ahead one position. How does this look? Now, I gotta start stretching where I am now, but I'm down at 10. High magnification, it's just borderline, it would work. But I want to choose the furthest back position that works well. So I'm gonna set the optic here because this is the furthest back that I can run the scope in the prone position and still see through it perfectly. Now we're going to move to 
other positions to double check. All right, we're gonna to go to what would be considered a modified standing position, and I'm going to check it for fit. I'm going to build a proper squared up position behind the rifle, and I'm going to put my head on the rifle with my eyes closed, because I want to see, does the rifle fit me where I want to be? So eyes closed, I'm gonna build a position here, and I'm gonna open my eyes. Okay. I have good eye relief. I'm gonna stay like this and I'm gonna run through the mag range. At my shortest eye relief magnification, I want to move my head very slightly further forward. So I could bring the optic back slightly. Now I'm going to do a sitting position and see how that works for me. All right, now we're going to build a sitting position here. This is a high sitting position. So another variation of basically standing and I'm going to build the position with my eyes closed again. I want to fit to the rifle, have everything good here. Now I'm happy. Open my eyes and I can see through. If anything, I want to have the optic further back after it reached slightly, but I'm at my shortest eye relief position. When I go to my longest eye relief position, I don't want to move back at all. Alrighty, we're going to build a low kneeling position here and we're going to uh, see how it works for me. Eyes closed, build my position, relax, comfortable, open my eyes, check through the mag range. Same thing, I'm centered in my eye relief window. Now on some optics, the eye relief moves so much that you are going to have to choose do I want to optimize it for the high magnification or for the lower magnification? Some optics, your extremities are in the middle. So you have to choose. And uh, in this case here, um, I am able to set it in one position and use the entire mag range. It would be ideal if all optics out there, the eye relief did not change, but unfortunately that's not the case. So I've concluded that this here is the best place for me to mount my optic considering prone, standing, kneeling, and sitting positions. So now we will mount our scope. All right, we have concluded that we want to have the mount on the rail in this position. So I'm going to torque it down. I'm going to torque it to 45 inch pounds. If you have a one piece mount and you have a standard tightening procedure, you will be able to remove the optic, put it on, retorque, and be within a tenth of a mil of zero, if not maintaining your zero. So my procedure is, we have the optic just slightly loose here. We push the optic forward. I'm gonna push from the back. And I'm, this is screw number one. I'm just gonna go, just, you know, five inch pounds. This is gonna be screw number two, screw number three, and screw number four. So now all of our screws have been seated against. And I'm gonna to torque number one to 25 inch pounds. Number two, three, four, and now I'm going to go to 45. There, I have my mount fixed to the rail properly. Now the other thing I did off camera is I loosened my rings and I moved my optic back. I spent a little bit more time fiddling around than what I did on camera. And I decided for PRS, my optimal position is going to be back half of a Picatinny rail distance more than what I had it with the mount here. So I loosened my caps, I moved it back about a quarter of an inch, and then I tightened them up here. Okay, now we have our mount torqued to our rail. Off camera, I also loosened my mount caps and I moved my optic further back 
approximately a quarter of an inch or about one half of a rail a step. I can't move my mount back any further so I simply move the optic back half a step to get it to that perfect position in the optimal range. I want to be able to use about 10 to 16 times magnification perfectly and so that's what I have this now set up for because positional shooting is what I'm looking to optimize for. Prone um, works just fine the way it is but I definitely would not want it any closer to me and that's what we are looking to balance. A couple of things to make that we want to make note of. If you mount have your mount too far back we could have an obstruction here with our bolt so we want to check that we're all good we're not going to have any obstructions anywhere here. All right guys we now have our rifle set up the stock fits us. We don't have to adapt to the stock. The optic is set in the right position so that we naturally want to be square behind the rifle. So we're ready to go do some testing. The next step is going to be doing ammo testing to discover what is my best option in this rifle. And then we can move on to chewing up our drop data. So I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching.